Uh, usually, usually I stand up and do a lot of work with it. So anyways, uh, I'm going to talk about Walt using uh, Node.js and starting with secrets. Okay, so did you know that 75% of internet traffic is actually social media traffic? And every one of them has a secret. Uh, a little bit about me. My name is Taz Barbati. Uh, that's my Twitter handle. That's my website uh, for my blog. I work for a company called Jamalto. It's now called Talis. I work as a system solution architect. And I'm kind of like Neo, you know, he's fighting over there. Uh, but I don't know Kung Fu. I know languages. I speak quite a few languages. I live in Canada, actually. I'm from Canada. Uh, that's Ottawa. And those two guys that you see over there is Drake and Vikan. They are from Canada. So you're welcome. <laughs> Although they don't live in the city that I live in. I live in the capital of the city. Okay, so what are secrets, basically? What are the secrets that we're talking about over here? Uh, it's not the 3 a.m. tacos that you're craving. That's not a secret. We know that you guys like the, your taco. Last night I actually went to a velvet taco. It was a pretty good taco. So what are real secrets? Basically, secrets allow you to have access to your authentication and authorization to a system. That's what it grants you. What are examples of secrets? Uh, username, passwords, database credentials. Let's say you have a connection string, your API token, your TLS certificate. Those are all considered as secrets of your system. So what do secrets allow you to do is basically you kind of like allows you to enter a system or a door like this guy. Uh, so today, what are we living in? Today we live in a world called uh, secrets rock. Basically secrets ends up being in your source code. You're, you're coding something, ends up being there in your version control system. You might have it in your GitHub that somebody committed a code and the secret is there. Uh, you might have it in your configuration management if you have Chef, Puppet, Puppet, or Ansible, you might actually leave your secrets there because you have to configure your software to run it and the secrets might be there. So what are the issues with that? So how do you know who has access to those secrets? Now that it's in GitHub, everybody has access to it, but who actually last used it? When was this last time access to the secret? What if you want to change the secret? Now what do you do? So what is the desired state of the secret so basically, it has to be encrypted in REST and in transit. It's only decrypted in memory when you need to use it. Uh, it has access control over it. And you can rotate and to revocation of the secret. Basically, if you need to change it, it should be easy to be able to change. So what does Keywall, uh, what does actually uh, HashiCorp will provide you with secrets? Actually, at AES 256, I don't know if people know about AES. That's the most modern day encryption that we have. A lot of people use this. It uses the GCM encryption, TLS 1.2 per client. It does not require you an HSM. Uh, anybody know what an HSM is? Basically a hardware security module that a lot of banks or like high security areas use. Think of it as a pizza box that uh, does encryption and decryption very, very well and very, very fast. And the secrets do not leave that box. So it's hard to hack into. Actually, uh, an episode of uh, Mr. Robot did use our HSM. I don't know you guys would probably not know, but we as security people kind of know. But it was fun. Uh, so what does uh, Vault actually provide us? Basically, it provides it with a centralized secret management. It encrypts at rest and transit, which we want to desire. Uh, there's lease and renewal of your tokens. It provides access control. And it provides an audit list, audit trail of like who access when. Uh, it provides a multi-client authentication. You can use LDAP, GitHub, App Rolls, all these kinds of things. Uh, it also provides something called dynamic secrets, which is pretty cool. And it's actually an encryption as a service. You can use it for encrypting your data too. So what are dynamic secrets? Basically allows one to release a secret for a period of two hours, for example. So those are dynamic secrets. Uh, it could be generated on demand for a unique for each user consumption. Uh, audit trail for it. So uh, dynamic secret, uh, Vault actually provides you a really, really good way to, to have database connection strings. So you could technically use Vault 
to say that uh, create me a user dynamically inside all of my MySQL server, and it would pass you back the credentials and you could pass it to your clients. So your client, when it connects to your database, it's just connecting to our to get a connection screen. Everybody could get a different connection screen, so it dynamically manages for you. So it's kind of nice. So there's a part of like when you start up Vault, they have something called unsealing the vault. So when you start it up, there's no keys or anything like that. They have a ceremony called unsealing. So Vault requires an encryption key to encrypt data, right? You need to provide it with some kind of a key to encrypt data. If you don't have a key, you can't encrypt data. And what Vault uses is something called Shamir secret key sharing. Uh, it basically splits the master key into multiple keys. So here you see a bunch of keys. Basically, it creates a bunch of keys, and then you pick like three out of the five, and then you say, that, okay, use these three keys to unseal, and it would create a master key, and would store that master key in the database, in Walt's database, and then use that for encryption. So you might have seen this too, like in real life, uh, in movies, basically, not in real life, but in movies, uh, when a submarine uh, captain says, shoot the missile or something, and then you see one guy plugs in his key, turns it, second guy plugs in his key, and third guy plugs in his key, all these three key matches, that's when the missile actually shoots. That's basically the same analogy that Shamir actually uses. So, so unsealing the wall, basically, so when you start up wall, it actually gives you like a bunch of keys, five keys. You can pick the keys that you want to use, and then you would basically initialize it and say that, okay, I want to unseal with key number two, key number five, key number four. Then you would unseal it and store that information for you. Now you would need somebody to store this information privately. I will have like three people who have this key or something, or you could use an HSM tool for that so that it automatically be seen every time it needs to be shown. So again, it's just using the wall command, you could say unseal and pass in each one of these keys and I want to actually unseal. Then you could initiate and start using Vault. So here, I'm actually trying to just log into Vault using a token that I was given by Vault. And basically allows me to just go in and log in with a, with a token that when it initialized. So when it initialized, gives me five keys, it also gives me a root token that I could use to actually log in so that I could do management and all that. So again, all of this is I'm using, I'm using Docker over here. It's just a vault server that I'm connected to, but there are curl commands that you could, uh, you could actually execute on, on, uh, on vault by, by whatever address on 8200 port. You could actually issue curl, uh, curl commands to it and actually do the exact same thing. But it provides you with like a wall provides you with command lines to do this thing. So you could write a secret as a key value, basically. So it's just basically put, get, delete. So you could see me over here, I'm saying wall key value, put a secret call hello, and the value is row. I could say the key is value. Well, it's very to say this, but like, let's say the key. This guy, it's not called value. Let's say the key is called API key is equal to one, two, three, four. Think of it that way, okay? And then you could get that secret and you could delete that too. So here I'm doing an example of really using the API key and saying that this is my secret slash my app that I plan to use for my application. And here's the key, API key, and the value is one, two, three, four. So it would actually store it into Vault and I could actually say, get me that key again and it would give me that value. So let's say you have an API to connect to a, an out, outside uh, service that you need to have an API key, you can store in Vault and every time they say that, hey, I need that API key to connect to the service or other service or whatever service that you have to connect to. So now that you have a key in there, you might actually want to provide some policies on that secret too. So you might want to say that, okay, here's the path for my secret web star. I only want to provide read to it. So you could actually write that secret, uh, write that policy into the secret, and then would actually have that policy. So I'll show you how what happens. So basically, you could say that okay, now I want to read Walt's secret slash web slash web app. It would actually return you back the secret. But when I go so Walt read address whatever the address is, and then secret slash hello, which is not the path of web slash star, it would actually give me a four hundred three. Would say that hey, you you don't have right to actually read this. Secret. Every time you actually call Vault, you need to have a token. So you would use a token to connect. So, okay, now I'll talk about Docker and Mario. How many people are using Docker? All right, that's good. So 
what are the, okay, how do you actually pass in uh, environment variables into it? You probably use something like, uh, in your node code, you would probably use like API keys equal to process dot env dot whatever, get that information back. And then when you run Docker, you would just basically pass in your API keys equal to one, two, three, four, and then just basically run it, right? So what is the issue with this? If I actually has hacked into your computer and have root access, I could actually do a Docker inspect and I could actually see what your API key is. So right here, you see me saying that API keys equal to one, two, three, four. If I do a Docker inspect on the container that you're running, I could actually find out what, what are the secrets that you're passing in. You might think that environment variable is very safe, but it's not. Actually. So what is the way to actually mitigate this? Security is all about mitigation. How hard is it gonna make it for somebody, some hacker to get into your system? And how, how much more trouble you're gonna make for them? So you have to mitigate everything. So, so you mitigate the environment, you store, you should use something. Vault has also something called wrap token. We'll go through that too. And uh, it has a limited time span of when you could use this token to authenticate and use that token. So it's, it, the wrap tokens are basically, a, like you could say that it's only valid for 30 seconds. So you would actually say that, okay, wrap me for 60 seconds and here's the address and I only want to allow the secrets to use weather app slash config to get the configuration information for my application. And then would create you a wrap token with this random do it. And then you could use this to connect to Vault and basically get back your secrets. But once you use it, it's gone basically. So if a hacker actually inspects your, your, your thing after 60 seconds and he tries to actually use that, he won't be able to get the secrets anymore because you already used it. So that's the nice thing about it. There's also something called app roles in it, which allows machines or apps to authenticate the vault. Uh, it uses a role ID and secrets. You can assign policies to your apps to again. Uh, once logged in, you get back a token to get secrets. Uh, how many of you are using Kubernetes? Not too many, but I'll go through, I'll go, I'll go through Kubernetes too. So you remember how I actually use a wrap token to do all this stuff, you still have to provide some ways to environment variable to pass in those wrap token and stuff. Kubernetes has its own way of uh, doing things. Actually allows you to use something called a service account to actually send a, send a jot. Uh, jot is basically a JWG. It's a, when you use OAuth, you actually use jot to authenticate. So you see a lot of communication that happens even when you log into Facebook and all that stuff. It's all sent back a JSON big object called jot tokens. And with that draw token, there's some cryptographic information in there that actually allows you to verify who you are and all that stuff. So Kubernetes allows you to send, to actually use the service account to actually get back jobs. So Vault would actually check the token and then actually, you know what, the next diagram shows you a little bit better. I don't know if it is. So most of you may not know what a pod is. A pod is the minimal thing in Kubernetes that runs your containers. So anything that you start with Kubernetes, the smallest thing you could create is a pod. So you would create your container in it, let's say your, your application, your fancy proof application that you're making Node.js, and you would stick it in there. And what the pod would do is actually go to the Kubernetes authentication and say that, can you provide me with a job so that I could talk to Vault? Because I need a token to talk to Vault, but I have no information on it, but can you give me a job that I could use? So you would actually, part two is actually, it would validate that, does this service actually have access? Do I give access to, for it to talk to Vault? And the API server says yes. Then actually it would give a access token. Usually it mounts it at a certain point in the file system where your application can then pick up. So it picks up and they random do it, and then it tries to connect to Vault to get back to the information. It's that simple, but it's all abstracted away from you. It sounds simple, but, but it, is, it is simple. Uh, it, think of it this way, your application starts, automatically somebody asks for something, it's mounted into a file system, you pick up that, that information that do it, and then you go talk to Vault to say that, can I get my database connection string please? And I would say, okay, here you go. Now your application would store the database connection string into memory, and it would start connecting to your database and start up everything. Uh, then now you're not storing your secrets into your application. Okay? That's pretty much it, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, thanks. Uh